Let Q be the set of rational numbers. A function f is called aquasulian if the following property holds. For every pair of rational numbers, f of x plus f of y equals f of x plus y, or f of f of x plus y equals x plus f of y. Show that there exists an integer c such that for any aquasulian function, there are at most c different rational numbers f of r plus f of negative r for some rational number, and find the smallest possible value of c. This is problem 6 from 2024 International Mathematical Olympiad. According to the official records, this problem is the hardest one in the competition, with only 5 out of the 609 participants could solve it. Let's attempt to find the solution. First, we'll analyze the problem. The aquasulian function f satisfies one of these properties for all rational numbers x and y. We focus on the first equation. When we apply function f, the arguments x is transformed into f of x, and f of y is transformed into y, the two conditions must occur simultaneously for function f. x and y are variables, so we can swap them. This results in an equation that exactly looks like the second one. Therefore, both equations are essentially the same in structure. We can use either of the two equations, and it won't matter which one we choose. Both will lead to the same result. According to the problem, when we substitute rational numbers into this expression, we get certain values. But we need to determine how many distinct values are possible for any equisulian function. To get the solution, we start from this expression. When we carefully observe this expression, there is a very useful condition. It involves the sum of two functions and includes only one variable. Let's consider r equals x plus f of y, where r, x, and f of y are different rational numbers. Then negative r equals negative x minus f of y. Since f satisfies the aquasulian property, the first part of the expression can be written as f of x plus y. We can now express this part in two ways. First, x becomes f of x and f of y becomes y we get negative f of x minus y. Here, everything cancels and we get zero. Now we have f of r plus f of negative r equals zero. This means f of negative r equals negative f of r. So what if f of negative r doesn't equal negative f of r? In this case, we can consider what happens if negative x becomes f of negative x. Then the first part stays the same, f of x plus y, and the second part becomes f of negative x minus y. Simplifying the equation, we get f of x plus f of negative x. So what can we get from this solution? We start from f of r plus f of negative r. We arrive at f of x plus f of negative x. This is a big improvement. Let's analyze this equation. Although we started x and r as different numbers, the two expressions end up with the same value. Therefore, both expressions must have the constant value. But can this value be zero? No, because we assumed f of negative r does not equal negative f of r. This means the constant value must be some number other than zero. Thus, there are two possible outcomes. If f of negative x equals a negative f of x, the expression becomes zero. Otherwise, the expression has a constant value other than zero, regardless of the value of x. So the function has two possible solutions. The smallest value of c, the number of distinct values for the given expression is two.